this video, I'm only going to scratch the surface of what's involved in tyre physics. And maybe you can do a bit of research on your own, but hopefully this will give you a good fundamental base. Before we get to the tyre, we need to talk about friction. Now, a lot of people taught friction, particularly in engineering degrees, as a sort of constant thing. You have a static friction and a dynamic friction. Now, the static friction will basically hold your force up to a point, and then once you exceed it, it will switch over to dynamic friction. Now, we can kind of see that in this graph. If we have a force that we're applying here, and this is the frictional force, as we apply a force, the friction force will rise to match. But eventually, we'll reach this point where we exceed the coefficient of static friction. Then, the frictional force will drop down to a certain point and continue. This can be seen in the equation Fr equals mu n. This being the normal force on an A object, and this being the frictional force, where this is the coefficient of friction. Now, when it comes to tires and things like that, this doesn't really apply. The problem is, is that we have deflections in our tire, and that changes the ball game. If we were to consider that as we apply a force, let's say the tire tread is static, but the tire wall is deflecting, we can see that if this was our force that we're applying, so this is our distance and this is our um, frictional coefficient, we can see that it would hold constant as the tire is deflecting over, and then it will start to slip, it will start to slide. So you'll drop down onto the dynamic coefficient and go along there. But in reality, the deflection is happening the whole time. So we're really seeing more of this action. But of course, being a real world system, nothing ever works out so that it's an instant step. Everything happens smoothly. And we've got rubber that's flexing all over the place. So when these curves smooth out a bit, we end up with something more like that. And this is kind of starting to get to the shape of what a real world tire friction curve looks like. 